Since 1888, visitors to Vancouver and residents have enjoyed the architecture and amenities of the Hotel Vancouver. The current Hotel Vancouver is actually the third hotel with that name. As Vancouver grew, so too did the Hotel Vancouver. The first one was built in 1888, one year after the Canadian Pacific Railway first arrived in the city. The first Hotel Vancouver was built by the CP Railway and was four stories tall. Views around it show how young Vancouver was as a city and how it grew. Here are photos from the late 1880s of the area's northeast, north, and northwest of the first Hotel Vancouver downtown. Immediately north of the hotel was a park and tennis court. The first hotel underwent expansion multiple times and before it was demolished, it had at least three wings with different architectural styles. Vancouver continued to grow, and you can see that the city around the hotel was building. Eventually, the first Hotel Vancouver was inadequate for Canada's Pacific port and westernmost big city. These photos show how downtown Vancouver evolved in the 1890s in the first decade of the 1900s. In 1912, the Grand Second Hotel Vancouver was built at the corner of West Georgia Street between Howe Street and Granville. That's exactly two blocks east of the current location of the third hotel. It also was built by the Canadian Pacific Railway. Locals and visiting guests and celebrities enjoyed its rooftop terrace with spectacular views. Babe Ruth was one of those early guests. Here are those views in different directions. It was beside the old courthouse, which today is the Vancouver Art Gallery. And here's a view of the hotel from Granville Street around 1916 and 1917 from two different angles. That second hotel was the center of business and social life in Vancouver. Here are its lobby and banquet rooms. Many business meetings Conventions and Christmas parties met there. And here's its busy driveway off West Georgia Street. And here is a man climbing the outside of the hotel. A huge crowd watches. Then he unfurls a poster, encouraging everyone to buy victory bonds to help fund the First World War effort. The second Hotel Vancouver was the leading hotel in the city, which continued to grow and fill in. Between the First and Second World Wars, Vancouver became Canada's third largest city. It passed Winnipeg in 1931. After the Panama Canal, it increased the speed of shipping and made railroads a bit less important. Vancouver has remained Canada's third largest city since then. Here are some views of the central city between the wars and a view of the second hotel looking north from Burrard and Nelson around 1926 and on Howe Street from Nelson around 1928. Its rooftop terrace remained a great way to see the city, sea and mountains. The third Hotel Vancouver was built by the Canadian National Railway. The CNR was in competition with the CP Railway. Construction 
construction started in late 1928 and proceeded quickly at first. But then the 1930s depression hit and work was halted. There were concerns about whether Vancouver could support two big railway hotels. Here are some views from the construction project. And the third hotel looked completed from the outside, although work was not finished on the inside. Here is a scene from Vancouver's Golden Jubilee in 1936, with crowds in front of the second hotel, with a view of the incomplete third hotel, two blocks west. The third hotel changed Vancouver's skyline. Here are some views of downtown during the 1930s. In 1932, after two years of construction, the Burrard Street Bridge opened. This helped move more businesses to Burrard. In 1938, the Lionsgate Bridge opened, connecting West Georgia Street to North Vancouver via Stanley Park. The new Hotel Vancouver was well placed at the corner of Burrard in West Georgia. A deal was worked out between the railway companies, and the third Hotel Vancouver finally opened in 1939, in time for the royal visit by King George VI and his wife Elizabeth, better known as the Queen Mother. In 1951, a young Princess Elizabeth and Prince Philip stayed at the Hotel Vancouver and held a reception by. The third hotel had a very different style than the previous hotels. The second hotel was built in the Grand Italianate Revival style. The third hotel was built in the Chateauesque architectural style. Many Canadian railroad hotels were built in that style. Some other famous Canadian railroad hotels in that style are the Chateau Laurier in Ottawa, the Chateau Frontenac in Quebec City, the Fort Garry in Winnipeg, and the Royal York in Toronto. Inside the third Hotel Vancouver, you can see the Art Deco decor from the opening in 1939. Here's a commercial office that rented space in the hotel. and many banquets and business meetings were hosted there. Although, as you can see, Vancouver and BC were starting to change. During the Second World War, the Canadian Armed Forces rented out the second hotel in its entirety, while the third hotel became Vancouver's grandest hotel. After the war, the second hotel sat vacant until homeless veterans of the war began occupying it with their families. Initially, 30 soldiers moved in, and then ultimately 700 veterans and their families were living there. The second hotel was demolished in 1949. Here are scenes, the demolition, including one with the PE parade, passing that year in front of the demolition work. And for years, that site was a parking lot, as seen here. Today, it's a bustling commercial building. The third Hotel Vancouver then simply became the Hotel Vancouver, or today the Fairmont Hotel Vancouver. Here it is hosting guests during the 1955 Canadian Football Grey Cup Championship. Cars grew ever more popular during the 1960s, and a large parkade complex was built on the south side of the hotel. Here are some memorable photos of hotel staff serving the construction crew building the multi-story parking lot. The downtown skyline in Vancouver grew ever more crowded starting in the 1960s. And today, the Hotel Vancouver is a picturesque chateau surrounded 
by office towers.